All right, IB Math SL1 kids. Uh, today we're going to go over 2.3, which is really just sketching some basic functions. Before we get into the actual graphs of fun functions, I want to remind you guys about y equals mx plus b. You guys have seen this before, but just a quick refresher that m is your slope. Um, so slope is a rise over run. Another way to find it is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 if you're given two coordinates. And another word for slope is gradient. Um, you may not have heard this word gradient before, but it's an IB term for slope. So sometimes there's going to be problems where they just say, find the gradient of this or given the gradient. So know that slope and gradient are interchangeable. This part of the equation, if it's in y equals mx plus b form, is your y-intercept. Which is usually like b comma zero. No, that's the x-intercept, my bad. It's um, zero comma b. There we go. So if you put an, an, an x of zero into it, a b comes out of it. So for the next three examples, uh, you're going to use the information to sketch a graph of each line. The first one, the x-intercept is at negative 3, 0, and the y-intercept is at 0, 5. Well, I'm starting with a graph, and the x-intercept is negative 3, 0, so I'm just going to count blocks. I'm going to say negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, so this is the point negative 3, comma 0. The y-intercept is an x of 0 and a y of 5. So we go from 0 up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then here is your y-intercept, 0, comma 5. Then you make a line that goes through those points, something like that. And this is a sufficient sketch for the given information, y-intercept of negative 3. I mean, sorry, x-intercept of negative 3 and a y-intercept of 5. Next up, the y-intercept is at 0, negative 1. So let's go ahead and just put a dot there at 0, negative 1. Then it says that it has a gradient of 1 over 2. So remember, gradient is slope which equals a rise over a run. So with this function, it rises one and runs two. So if I were to zoom into my graph here, um, I'm gonna make what's called a slope triangle. A slope triangle is if I go up one, so it's got a rise of run one, and then a run of two, and then I can put a dot here. So it goes up one over two. Then I can continue this pattern to go up one, over two, put another dot. Then I can keep going like this if I want. I mean, I could go up one over two again, so rise over run. Or I could even do the opposite if I want to go to the left. Um, I could start here and then go, instead of up one over two, I could actually go down one, left two. So I could go down one, to the left two and put a dot here. Now that I've gotten a bunch of dots on here, I think it's okay to connect the dots. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, it's pretty close. So here's a sketch of that function or that linear equation. Um, I know in the past some teachers are like, you have to do a minimum of three dots or four dots or something like that. I actually don't care too much uh, if they tell you to sketch because a sketch is not supposed to be like incredibly accurate as long as your points are labeled correctly and, and like the, it goes the right direction and stuff like that. I'm not going to care too much. Ah, next up, we're going to graph a sketch of y equals negative x plus 1. So first up, let's talk about everything we know about this function. Um, the slope is the number in front of the x. So if you look in front of the x right here, 
There's not really a number, but if you, there's ever not a number there, you can just pretend it's a little ghosty one. So it's like a negative one in front of the X. Then a slope is usually a fraction, so I'm actually gonna say this is negative one over one. Remember, again, this is your rise over your run. So that means for your rise, it's negative. It's actually gonna drop one and then run one. So it's gonna go down one to the right one. And then your y-intercept right here is zero comma one. So let's start with the y-intercept, which is zero comma one. Then we're gonna go down one over one. So if I go down one over one, so down one over one, here's the next point. Then down one over one again, here's another one, another one. You could even go backwards this way and put some of them over here if you like. But then you can draw a line connecting those. So this is a decent sketch of y equals negative x plus one. I guess I could label it if you guys want. That's what it looks like. Slope of negative one goes through one. Oh, in general, negative slopes have this kind of downhill uh, trend to them. And then positive slopes would have like an uphill trend to them if reading it left to right, always left to right. So uphill, positive slope. Next up, they're not using y's and x's, they're using n and c of n. Well, if that's confusing to you, the input is always the horizontal axis. So I'm gonna label this one n and this one c of n. So these are inputs and these are outputs. Now, you might look at this function right here, this equation, and say, well, it's not in y equals mx plus b form. Uh, you can always rearrange that. You can always say that this is the same thing as 5n plus 40, and then your slope equals 5 over 1, and your y-intercept is... 0, 40. Now, in terms of graphing this, yes, I could start at 40 and go up 5 over 1, up 5 over 1, but I feel like it's going to be awkward with the tick marks on this graph about whether they should go up by 5s or 1s or 10s or something like that. So I'm actually going to use um, a, a system called graphing by intercepts. And the way you do this is you find the x and the y intercepts and then you just plot those and connect them with a line. To find the y intercept, all you have to do is make the x zero or the n in this case. So um, to find, uh, I'd show you c's of n, so yeah, I guess I could. So to so find um, the y intercept, we'll do c of zero equals five times zero plus 40. So C of zero is equal to 40. That means that zero comma 40 is the y-intercept. Pull a box around it. Now to find the x-intercept, so for the y-intercept, we made x zero, and then we found the y. It's the exact opposite with the x-intercept. If you want to find the x-intercept, you make y zero. So here, we're going to set the equation equal to zero and say this is 5n plus 40, and then solve for n in this case. So to solve for n, we subtract for oh, come back please. We subtract 40 off each side. So we get negative 40 equals 5n, then divide both sides by five, and then we get negative eight equals n. Um, that means that our x-intercept is negative 8, comma 0. 
Now, because these are kind of awkward units, like the X's need to go up to, you know, eight and the Y's need to go up to 40, I'm probably gonna use different units uh, tick marks on the X's and the Y's. That's okay to do as long as you label what tick marks you're using. So for the Y's, I'll probably go up by tens. I'll say like this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Then for the X's, I need to go out to at least negative eight, so we'll just go by ones. We'll say this is negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. Oh, am I gonna make it? Uh, I'm gonna have to delete part of that. That's fine. So now that I have, I can see where both those intercepts are, I'm going to put a big dot on 40 for my Y intercept. And I'm going to put a big dot on negative eight for my X intercept. And then I'm going to connect the dots. So that's what it looks like. That's graphing by intercepts. I like graphing by intercepts because you don't have to rearrange the equation that much or think about the slope that much. You just like purely find the intercepts and connect those two dots with a line, and then you're done. The next two problems, we're gonna use a GDC. Does anybody know what GDC stands for? That's correct, it is graphics display calculator. Um, if you've never graphed with a GDC, I'm going to tell you guys instructions for like a T83 or 84. Uh, first, press uh, the lower left button, which is the on button. Then press the upper left button, which is the Y equals button. If there's already an equation in there, hit your clear button. So the clear is a button. I guess I'll put a box around that so you know it's a button. Clear anything in Y1. Then you're going to input your equation into Y1. Um, and when you need to use X, you're going to use the X, T, theta, N button. It's right next to the alpha button. Then press the upper right-hand button, which is graph. Then if you can see a good view of the graph, cool. But sometimes, like depending on what's been going on with your calculator, you, your window might not look good. So you might have to adjust your window. You can hit your window button and then punch in uh, values for the you know X min, X max, Y min, Y max. So we're going to use our GDC to sketch negative x squared plus 4. Now, down the road, you guys should probably know, like not yet, after we do transformations, uh, that this turns a parabola upside down, and then this shifts it 4 up. So using your GDC, you should see that the vertex of this parabola is at 0, 4, and then it opens downward like this. I don't necessarily care what the X and Y intercepts are right now. Like on my graph, they came out to about negative three and positive three. That might not be true. I guess here, I'll punch it in my calculator and see what I get. So negative X squared plus four, and then graph it. And then my window is wrong, so I'll get back to zoom standard. I'll teach you guys how to use zoom standard. So like, yeah, they're probably more like, oh, they are at two. So I guess I here I could change that since we're using the GDC. Like they are more here and here. So it looks like this. There we go. Next one, use the GDC to sketch the square root of X minus three. Well, down the road, you should know that uh, the square root function is what I call the space dolphin. So I know it's some kind of space dolphin, and this actually tells me that it's been shifted three to the right. So it starts at positive three, and then it jumps out of the water going in this direction. There it is. I guess I could check on my calculator to make sure I'm right. So second square root x, take away three, close that parentheses, graph it up. Yep, we nailed it. 
All right, you guys, that's all I have for today. Pretty short and sweet, and I think your homework's not too bad either. Yeah, it's just like three problems, and each of them has some subcategories. Uh, please ask me homework questions as I'm walking around. Good luck.